you end this video, make sure, again, you can end at any position, but make sure to comment down what you learned from it. Or you can, again, write down somewhere else that what you learned from it. Until unless you write down consciously what you learned from a video, we will always keep on forgetting what you learned. So always make sure to comment. Now, in summary, the problem simply says that we have n friends numbered from 1 to n, n friends number from 1 to n, and they are numbered in the clockwise cyclic fashion. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and like this. Again, clockwise cyclic fashion. And what you have to do at every step is remove the second friend. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Ultimately, this will be the person who is winning person. You saw how I removed the how I how, how I removed it. You have to replicate the exact removal process and find who is the winning friend. Now, obviously, this is the circle I which is given to you. What you have to do again? If I just like put it down, what you have to do? Like let's say I put it down one, two, three, four, five. So at every step, I will simply leave k minus 1 elements again I have to remove the kth element right I have to remove the kth element and I have to replicate the cyclic process we had already seen in these kind of videos that there are two ways to deal with this cyclic pattern again for you to remember again let's say if I have a array 1 2 3 4 5 if it is said it is cyclic then one ways I can write it exactly as it is but if it can, again, this is just saying it is cyclic, but it can handle cyclic being only twice. But if it is repeatedly cyclic, I can make it as a queue, which means after five, I again want a one, which means that this element, if it has gone, I will put it in the end or any way you can say just you're putting in the end. Other way to deal with the cyclic problems is by using modulo operation. Now, okay, we know that these three are the only options by which we can deal with the cyclic problem. In this case, let's say I know I have to go and look at the kth element, 1, 2. Now, technically these numbers, again, 2 should be removed, that is for sure, but 1 is something which should come on again later on, but it should come on in the end. So what I did, I removed it and I put it in the end so that it can again come on. It is same way replicating a Q, like Q replicates your cyclic behavior. List also replicates your cyclic behavior. Q also replicates your cyclic behavior. In list, you will just have to keep on adding something. But Q, you can just put it by yourself, removing it. Now again, the process again starts. You again are here. You have to again remove the second element. Again, three will come in the end. Okay, this is gone. Again, you are here. You have to remove the second element. Okay, this is gone. Five will come in the end. Again, you are here, you have to remove the second element. Again, this is gone and 3 will come in the end. And again, at last, if the size of a queue is 1, you know that this is your answer. So, this is the exactly the same thing which we will also do. We will replicate the exact process by using our queue. And while my queue size is more than, more than 1, I will repeat the process. As soon as it becomes 1, I know I have got my answer. So I will take a simple queue. I will simply push all the elements from one to n in my queue. Then I will simply keep on repeating until my queue size is more than one. And as I say, I will from I from the front, I will keep on remo removing k minus one elements. I will simply keep on removing them and also keep on pushing them in the end. I'll keep on pushing them, right? And again, I'll remove them, I'll push them in the Front again uh, for a queue. If I do it like this is the front, front, and this is the front portion, you remove it and you push it. And when you say push, you push it actually in the from the back itself. And for the kth element, you have to remove it. You don't have to push it, you have to remove it from the queue entirely. So I will simply remove that kth element, and ultimately, I will have only one element remaining, and that one element is my answer. Now, as for every element, if I just put it again. As for every element, you are technically going on to the array k times, removing them, remove for one element being removed, you have to iterate on the array k times. K, because for one element removal, you have to check, okay, what's the kth element and then remove the starting k minus one element and put them in the end. So for one element removal, it is k times operation required. For n minus one element removal, Operation required will be n minus 1 into k, thus the complexity will be n into k. 
and because the q size will be of space n so the space will be n now this is obviously we know it is cyclic and this is the basic simulation of the problem itself because it was a cyclic problem there was one more way we had seen in math kind of videos again if you don't know these tricks just go and watch this video you will get it we have standard tricks for math which we use by using modulo now we realize that somehow i can use modulo just to replicate where i will reach let's see how we will do it so let's say again we remembered always that when we use a modulo we have to do it in a zero based indexing every time we do it in a zero based indexing because repeating of a module happens 0 1 2 3 4 if i have five elements if i do again if i go to a fifth element this should replicate my zeroth element if i have five elements if i go to the like if i repeat it again so it should replicate my cyclic process so it is nothing but 5 mod 5 6 will be nothing but 6 mod 5 which is replicating to your 1 so it should be zero based indexing that is also we know so we converted this entire process to a zero based zero based indexing i have put the friends f0 f1 f2 f3 f4 but specifically what matters for me is their indexes 0 1 2 3 4 now i know that my k is 2 so for sure this friend will be removed but the actual crux is what is the new state looking like new state will say now this is the starting friend of mine indexing is 0 1 2 3 okay then this again person is removed what is the new state now new state is this is the f4 is now the starting point f4 is the starting point again this friend again as you can see i put the indexes accordingly as what the current state should look like and then this is a starting point this is removed again this will be because as this is gone so this is a new starting point so this is a new starting point and this friend will be gone ultimately in the end this is something which is remaining to work to me now if you look very closely to this again this is just finding a pattern and finding something that you can utilize that something to get your answer so if i look at this very carefully i know that my final state i will for sure have the index of zero because i will have only one element and i have been whosoever is the fresh person if you remembered whosoever is the fresh start i have been putting their indexes as zero indexes as zero so i know one thing for sure that in the end my in the end my value of index is zero so if i replicate this process by indexes or let's say n so i will say that i am technically solving for my n k remained constant k every time k every time remained constant k every time went on to the second person second person second person second person so it remained always constant so you can keep it here also or you can keep it global also that's up to you but what will happen is n is there when your n is one which means you only have one element you only have one element or you can say when your n value is zero that also makes sense but technically it says when you only have one element or you can also say that okay if the value of this is zero considering what you're putting it there but let's say i have only one element remaining which means its value will for sure for sure be equal to zero so let's imagine that the solve function will return you the value or the index of that specific element in the last when i have only one element remaining the index will for sure be zero so if the n is one i will simply say index is like value zero but the prime task is how will i go to the previous state previous state will simply say now i have two elements now tell me what is the index of the winner ultimately that's what i require here i am saying here i am saying if i have one element then this of the winner will for sure be zero but ultimately this is when i am in the final state ultimately in this particular pattern i have to tell what is the index of the winner so ultimately my task is to figure out what is solve function of when the values when the, when i have five elements and the jump size is two then what is the index of the final winner so i will try to go back and see if i can find some relation okay if i go back i see that somehow i should be able to figure out that what are the new indexes or what what or what is the new index of the winner but then i see okay it is zero it is also zero um so am i saying the index of the winner remains same that is something which i'm just guessing out so for this i went on to an example which had more more indexes for me to compare with so i realized that 
I know intrinsically that I, that the winner is zero. So zero is here. If I go again, as you see, I am going backwards now. From this state, this state, this state, I came like this. Now from back, I am going up and trying to find the relation itself. Then I realized that my F2 was the winner. So as it go as it went backwards, it index became two, which intrinsically helps me to find out that okay, F3 had index of one, it became three. F4 had an index of 2, it became 4. F0 had an index of 3, it became 0. So what's happening here? What's happening is, I know one thing for sure. When F2 was the starting person, it, it went on. And oh see, when the F1 was dead, F2 should be a starting point, a new starting point. When F2 is a new starting point, its index will for sure start from 0. Now, I know that next time, Next time, which means in the very beginning, if it was a starting point, it went to zero. How it could have happened? Indexes are zero based. Indexes are zero based. So if I know the F0 was starting in the very beginning, K, K people have been killed, which means up till the K minus one index, K minus one index person would have been killed. So Kth index person will be the new starting point. So Kth index person, which means as you can see, second index person will be the new starting point. Because K people have been killed, which means K minus one index have been killed. So K person is a new starting point. In that case, I know one thing for sure that two went down to zero. So if I want to bring it back, so zero should come back to two, which means zero, I should add a plus K. I should add a plus K and I can replicate the same thing. As you can see, one plus K becomes three, two plus K becomes four, three plus K becomes four. 3 plus k plus k as in 2. So 3 plus 2 is actually 5. 5. It should actually become a 0. Oh, how it can happen? Only if I do a modulo by 5 because I know I have 5 elements. So my indexes should remain below less than 5. So if I am doing a 3, if I am doing a 3 plus k, I have to do a mod of 5. Mod of 5. Again. You see very important thing here that 3 is this value plus k is constant mod of 5. 5 is of this. Here the n value is 4. But to reach back, I am doing a mod with 5. So now by this inference, let's say if I replicate the same thing and try to come up. So here it I know the winning person is having a value of 0. So 0, 0, 0 plus k mod of n. N, N should be of the state to which I am going, to which I am going, and I am going to this state N. So it should be 2. So 0 plus 2 mod 2, 0 plus 2 mod 2, it becomes a 0 only. So you see, I am only going on to winning state just backwards. Now from there here to here, again, 0 plus K, 0 plus K mod 3, it becomes 2 only. Now 2 plus K mod 4. 2 plus 2 mod 4, it became a 0. Now 0 plus 2, if I just erase this, so it will become 0 plus 2 mod of what? 5. That became a 2 only. So, so index is 2 of the winning person. Ultimately, you remembered I decreased the index by 1, so as to bring it as a, as a 0 based indexing. So I know that final index is 2, but that is 0 based. Final index will be 3 itself. So my answer is 3. And that is my answer. So if I write the exact same as a recursive format, what will happen? From a state solve of n comma k, I reached onto a different state where I just decreased my n. So from solve of n comma k, or I can say 5 comma 2, I am technically going and finding my answer for solve of 4 comma 2. But then from solve of 4 comma 2 to solve of 5 comma 2, what I do, I do a plus k, but then I do a mod of n, n is 5 here, n is 5 here. So it will boil down to solve of n comma k will be solve of n minus 1 comma k plus k and mod with n. This is your recursive relation and that's your answer also. Cool. So let's decode it. It's exactly same. We will simply call solve for n comma k again plus one is because now I have returned every indexing to 
one like zero based so i am doing i am i am performing this operation on a zero based indexing plus one to put it back to one based indexing if my n is one simply re return a zero because i know its index will for sure be zero then else my solve of n comma k will be equal to solve of n minus one comma k plus k mod n and that's a recursive relation and because of this you know that you are only dealing with n in the recursive call so your time will be o of n itself k is constant make sure k is constant here so time will only be o of n but because it's a recursive call so space will also be o of n because of recursive stack being used now if you want to optimize it because in the problem it itself mentioned that can you solve it in constant space so for sure you will try to turn this recursive to a iterative version which can make your problem constant how you will do it simply replicating what happened and in iterative again as in recursive you go from top to bottom in iterative you come from bottom to top and ultimately when you were driving we went both ways so what happened here itself when you were here you did a plus k mod 2 because n was 2 here then you do a plus k mod 3 then you, then you did a plus k mod 4 then you did a plus k mod 5 so in the existing value of a 0 i did a 0 plus k mod 2 then i did what's the value here got I got here, I did, let's say the value was V. So I did a V plus K mod 3. Again got a value V, then I did a V plus K, V plus K mod 4. Then I again got a value V, again I did a V plus K mod 5. Repeat the same thing. So I will do a, I know I have to do mod, I have to start doing mod from 2, 3, 4, up till 5. 5 was my N value. So I will repeat the same process. I will do a mod with, let's say, I, I will go up till n but start from my 2 and in the very beginning my value v was a 0 so my value v was a 0 i will put it here assigned to a value and will keep on repeating the process and with this we have solved the exact same thing in the iterative form thus you see the code this is exactly same value plus k mod with i and the value initialized to 0 and this Value will have the final answer, but the indexing is zero based. So put it as one based indexing, and that is your final answer. Time and space will be O of n, and space will be O of one because we are not using any extra space at all. I hope you guys got it. Do comment down below what you learned from this video. Until unless again, I don't want you to comment down here. Comment down somewhere, but make sure any time you come onto the same problem, you should know that this is what you learned in this video. Bye bye.